Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to another episode of DudeCast. In this episode, we're going to go over installing MailPile on one of your DigitalOcean droplets. Now, what is MailPile? Well, MailPile is this awesome email client. It's not an email server. It's an email client, so it would be a replacement for your things like Thunderbird or Mail App on the Mac or Outlook on uh, Windows or something like that. But what it does is it takes security and encryption to the next level so that, you know, not just anyone can go ahead and just read your email. So with that said, you're going to need an email server on the back end side that's going to be processing your email. This is just going to be the email client. So the front end of everything, but it does help with encryption and uh, security and um, authentication, things like that. So what we're going to do is, um, instead of me going over all of this stuff, I recommend you check out mailpile.is. And right now you'll notice that mailpile is in um, beta time, so it's in beta mode. And um, it was currently in alpha mode and uh, alpha 2 and all that stuff. And I was just so excited that when it came out in beta, that uh, we can go ahead and start testing this thing and they've made a lot of great improvements including being able to install it directly on Windows, directly on your Mac or um, within a Linux server such as what we're going to go over in this video. So when you get the chance go ahead and check out mailpile.is. Uh, if you're a developer go ahead and um, I encourage you to start contributing to this repo or this project because one it was featured in Indiegogo and it was a crowdfunding campaign that actually went way over its goal so you can see it's 163 percent funded now this was back in 2013 but it would help you uh, to kind of understand mailpile a little bit more by just going through this page really quickly and then once you get the chance to go to the website take out take a look at the fact and take a look at the demos and um, uh, just take a look around this site but uh, let's go ahead and jump in the digital ocean and uh, get this installed on one of our droplets so I'll hop in the digital ocean I have my droplet host name I'll just go ahead and put MP for mail pile uh, we don't need a bigger size I'm just gonna select the smallest size here and the region closest to me with the image is gonna be Ubuntu so I'm gonna leave that alone I'll go ahead and I'll just use my SSH key so make sure you have this set up if you don't it makes it super super convenient and then I'll create the droplet once your droplet is created, go ahead and take that IP address and we're just going to log into the root user of our droplet and I'm not going to go over uh, setting up another user. I'm just going to do everything within root uh, just to speed the process up here. But let's jump into our command line interface and then I'll just go ahead and SSH into my root user with the IP address and then I'll just press enter and I'll add that to my known host list. All right, so we're within the droplet here. First thing we want to do is go ahead and get some of the dependencies that we're going to need to go ahead and pull this repo, get everything installed, and get my mail pile up and running. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and update our system. So we'll app get update just to make sure that everything is up to date. And then from here we'll go ahead and install get. We'll install some of the pip. Um, installation dependencies and what pip is is used to install some of the requirements on our Linux based uh, droplet here so now what we'll do is get get installed so I'll go ahead and I'll just paste in all the commands here that way you don't have to watch me type and uh, before I press enter let's go ahead and go over some of the things that are going to be installed first we have get we have some of the Python dependencies for pip uh, we have a Python dev essentials and some of the libraries that we're going to need now. You'll notice the dash Y at the end of this, and this basically tells um, AppGet to go ahead and assume yes for all the prompts that will come up. Basically, those prompts will tell you how much uh, storage this will go ahead and use and whether or not you want to go ahead and continue. And just this just goes right through it all. So I'll press on enter right now, and that'll install all of that for us. Now with that installed, let's go ahead and clear out the view and let's go ahead and clone the repo for MailPile. So let's go ahead and jump back into the browser to get that repo URL. We'll simply go to fork me on GitHub. This will take us to the GitHub repo where we can go ahead and uh, we can grab this URL right here, jump back into our terminal and we'll just go to get clone and then we'll paste in the URL here. 
what that'll do is it'll install it in our root directory and if you want to install it somewhere else then you want to clone this to another directory you want to jump into that directory first all right so with it cloned into this directory let's go ahead and use ls to view everything in here and you can see that we have the directory mail pile right there so let's go ahead and change into that directory and let's install the requirements in the requirements.txt file so let's see what that looks like before we install that so we'll just cat the requirements file and that's gonna be your text file so this is what's in there and it's just gonna go ahead and install these for us alright so let's go ahead and use pip to do that so we'll pip install recursively requirements.txt alright so it's gonna go ahead and install that for us now that it's installed we can go ahead and get it running We'll just type in the command here to get mailpile running and you'll see that we now have the mailpile command line open where we can start implementing some of the mailpile commands and you can go ahead and jump into the mailpile wiki if you're curious on how to use that. All you have to do is jump back into the GitHub repo, scroll down a bit and you'll be able to find the link to their wiki under installing mailpile where you can go ahead and browse through some of the things here. We're installing it on Linux, so you can go ahead and go to get started on Linux. And if you want to, you can look through some of the documentation here. Um, this is the information for using Mailpile's command line, so you can click on that link. And you can look through some of the information here on um, working with the command line. But we're not going to be working with the command line in this video. We're just going to go ahead and get the web interface set up. So let's jump back into terminal and get that going. All right, again, so we see the command line functioning here, but what about the web interface? Well, if we try to go to this URL here, which you would need to, of course, replace localhost with the URL of your droplet, and then you would just add the port number in here. So I'm just gonna copy the port number here. And I'll jump back into Safari, and then, of course, I'll go ahead and I'll grab this IP address here. So I'm just gonna open up a new tab so I can just start pasting that in there, and I'll grab the IP address and I'll just go ahead and press enter. So what we'll see most likely is a page where it doesn't actually show Mailpile but rather an error page. So let's go ahead and let this load. All right, so as you can see, it went ahead and tried to load that uh, port number on that IP address. But again, like I said, it wasn't able to find the actual server and display everything in there. And that's because it's actually not allowing another computer to go ahead and access Mailpile, and that's just a security setting. And what we can do is we can actually turn this off. So like a switch, we can turn it on and off. So what we'll do is we need to jump back into Terminal. Next, we'll just close out of the, the Mailpile command line right there. And what we'll do here is paste in the following command. So what that does is it sets the port and the host so that another outside computer can go ahead and access Mailpile. So let's go ahead and just click on Enter. And then we'll just start up the Mailpile server again. And you'll notice that if we refresh, so you'll notice that instead of localhost, it's now showing 0.0.0.0. .0 and if we go back into Safari, and of course we refresh this page, we should notice that Mailpile is starting up for us. Voila, we are now able to use the Mailpile web interface. So awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and begin. We'll start it off with English. You can go ahead and set that to something else if you need to. Then you're gonna go ahead and set your passphrase. I'm gonna set it to something easy, even though it says to set it to something that it's hard to guess. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to something easy for demonstration purposes. Then I'll go ahead and I'll authenticate and it's creating the encryption key. So let's go ahead and um, click on next. So remember that can take a little bit to do. So if you jump in there and you start sending um, emails out, you might notice that the encryption key is is not ready yet. So um, just keep that in mind that it takes a, a little while in the background to do that. But now we can go ahead and set up a profile here. So you can set up your name, your email, and your work. So one thing we can do is set up Gmail to be our background web server. So again, this is a email client. And um, sorry, not web server, but email server. Um, and we can set Gmail to be used here. And I'll go ahead and I'll do that. All right, so I've entered in a couple of things here, just my a name and email. I'm using a Gmail here. And you'll notice that Mailpile is smart enough to go ahead and set up Gmail sending for a route. So I didn't actually have to click in here and add a route. 
it's already using Gmail sending. Now, if you do need to add a route, you can go ahead and click in here and you can enter in your SMTP settings and your mail settings. That way it can work with MailPile. Remember that MailPile is just an email client, not an email server. So you need something working in the background to go ahead and process those emails. With that said, entering in Gmail, MailPile was smart enough to do that. I just entered in my Gmail password. It was able to successfully connect to Gmail via my credentials here. And if I wanted to, I could add a note here um, describing the role of this, of this profile and I'll just leave it blank and I'll save the profile here and you'll notice that John comes up here with my email address. I can go ahead and edit this profile if I wish to but I'll click on next and it's going to analyze the source so Gmail is the source. Let's go ahead and you can go ahead and configure it and what that'll do is it'll allow you to set up all the uh, folders and the mailboxes within Gmail. I'm just going to go ahead and click on save and that will allow me to move forward with this. Of course, you, when you're setting this up, you want to take a little bit more time to set up MailPile, but just for example's sake, I just want to get this going for you guys so you know what it looks like. All right, so I'll click on Next, and I've successfully been able to set up MailPile here. So now I can begin my tour of MailPile. This is looking so awesome. The MailPile team has done just a fantastic job of getting this up and running for all of us. All right, so let's go to our inbox. And the first thing you'll notice is that um, you can back up your encryption key and passphrase. And it, you'll essentially you'll want to do it now, but uh, for example's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and close that out. And now once you're in MailPile, I encourage you to take a look around at all the different things we have here. We have our different tags. We have all mail, just like Gmail has all mail. You can look at all of it. You have photos, files, links. You can edit the sidebar if you wish to. Um, you have your inbox here. And uh, one thing to note while this is in beta, I believe I read it uh, while reading through all the articles, is that because MailPile doesn't know what's been read and what hasn't been read, uh, the functionality just isn't working uh, as of yet, it marks everything as unread for now. And you can go ahead and you can mark it uh, read if you need to. But um, some of the cool things here is you can go ahead and begin composing and using Gmail. If you set up Gmail or your email client, um, just make sure that your encryption key has been finished generating in the background. Uh, but you can go ahead and you can email out. You can add your contacts here. Um, you can add your subject. Your contacts will be saved to your contact section, which is now up here in the upper right hand corner. Um, you can add contacts here if you wish to. The search feature was one of those emphasize things within one of the videos I was watching on MailPile because that's what he actually started off with was building a search engine um, and then he built MailPile around that but like I said take a look around guys get familiar with this if you're a developer I encourage you to jump in and contribute to the product if you're not a developer but you like what you see I encourage you to donate to MailPile it's a 100% free open source software and they're doing some fantastic things here I can't stress how important it is to put an emphasis on your privacy and just some of the things that they're doing at MailPile is amazing guys it's amazing and it's a lot of hard work so go ahead and support them however you wish uh, share this video if you can that way um, other people can become aware of MailPile and in some future videos I'll go over how to install MailPile on a Mac and um, keep in mind they do also have a local Windows version um, that you can use if you go to mailpile.is which is their main site and just click on downloads you can go ahead and go through getting these things installed on either your Mac Windows or Linux you can also take a look at their security roadmap and some of the things that they're they have released in their release notes but I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoy using MailPile again they are doing some fantastic things here and if you guys can contribute in any way whether it be a donation simply using MailPile or if you're a developer contributing to some of the source code there and helping them out with that so thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one